going to get started. Everyone, welcome, welcome. I know it's been a long time since we've done another episode. I believe the last one was, it was Justin, um, the owner of the Men's Loafers Brands, which is doing amazing. But this one is a very special one because we have a, like, it's just amazing how things work, how we have a great connection um, and how we were able just to kind of connect and we hit it off and wanted to get her on here. But I have Miss Kate Shanahan. And so we're going to get to learn more about her. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and pass it on to her. Kate, can you just kind of tell a brief overview of who you are, what you do, and before we get into it all? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here, and you're incredible, so I've been looking forward to this all morning. Um, but as you mentioned, my name is Kate Shanahan, and I am a sales consultant with Henry Schein Dental. Mm -hmm. And Henry Schein sells supplies, equipment, technology, and other business solutions to dentists. Sweet, sweet. And so this is going to be great because we have a we both work in the industry and it's going to be good to kind of share our love. Uh, but we're going to go back in time. We're going to go back in time, back in time, back in time. So let's just kind of start. Who is Kate? You know, where are you from? And how was how was life when you were young? Uh, you're still young. How's life when you were young, and etc. Brownie points. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Trying. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I grew up right here in North Carolina. I have the world's greatest parents and step parents. Um, and I'm lucky enough to have all of them and my two brothers and grandparents all in Raleigh also. So wow. I'm really lucky to have them right down the road. We try to get together on a regular basis, whether that's Sunday dinners once a week. And then recently we got really brave and started taking one international trip as a family mm -hmm. together each year with both Whoa. sets. So, so far, so good. Um, wow. But yeah, they're awesome. Wow. So that's like, that's kind of the same thing for us. We used to do, um, we haven't done it in a while, but we would do like neighborhood trips because our neighborhood was really close. So we just go to like state hopping or we go to like different countries. So that's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, how, I know Raleigh's definitely changed and it's literally changing every week, but like what's the differences that you've seen like how is Raleigh before and how is it now, whether it's like people, building, environment wise, like how has it changed in your eyes? Yeah, well, I have to pay to park now, so I'm still <laughs> not used to that. Uh, but no, Raleigh is one of the most sought out places to live for a ton of different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, the quality of living is mm -hmm. great. The cost of living is great. It's easy to get around. Um, but you do notice now that it takes a little bit longer to get from point A to point B. Downtown is just booming. Um, it's really small business friendly. Um, so it's kind of like a big city vibe or a little city vibe, depending right. on what you're right. looking for. So it has a lot to offer. For exactly. I feel like you have the choices too. Like if you're in downtown Raleigh, you get the downtown esque, but it like if you're in the country in like Youngsville, then you kind of get like the best of both worlds. Right. Yeah. So did you, um, during school, when you, you know, were you, were you extremely athletic? Were you into, you know, academics? Like who were you when you were younger and, and kind of how did you go from where you, where, where you were to kind of like where you are right now? Yeah, totally. So I like to be involved back back in the day and now. I like to have my hands in everything. So <laughs> school, and I went to Ravenscroft in North Raleigh, uh, which is where both of my grandparents taught, which was pretty cool, or my grandmothers taught. Um, so played basketball, volleyball, what? softball, I swam, you name it. I loved it. I really liked being a part of a team. I like mm -hmm. that structure, and I like the different personality types, and I like to be challenged. Um, I was also really involved in the theater because it was a good outlet for my creative side so I just think life is all about trying as many different things mm -hmm. uh, figuring out what you like and keep doing those and equally as important figuring out what you don't like and don't do those exactly so that's transferred into adulthood so if I love doing something I'm gonna do it and if I don't like it I'm not gonna do it exactly just fo it's just like uh focusing on your strengths <laughs> exactly so what did you you kind of I know you like I've noticed like a little pattern of you may, going out and trying things, but like, where did that come from? Was it like a push from your parents? Did you kind of get like, you know, one day you just woke up and you're like, you know what, I'm going to do everything. I think that mindset, it's just how, just how I am. Um, uh -huh. I'm a natural goal setter. I like to be challenged. I'm super curious. I want to be as well-rounded mm -hmm. as I can be. So I think that's just in my, in my bones. I think I was just born that way. Do you think that's, and it's such a great topic because I, uh, we learn stuff in school, but I feel like some of the things we're not learned is like 
self-awareness, you know, uh, determination, like hard work. I know a lot of people think, especially because of, you know, cell phones and everything being instant, a lot of people want stuff like right now. Um, but like, what do you think is, it, 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 why is it important to have that trying everything, but also you have to realize you have to put in the work for you really find it. For yeah, it absolutely. And that is something there's no substitution for it. There is no substitution for hard work. And you mentioned that people think uh, people want things instantly. And that's just, that's a, that's a short term quick fix to get where you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, trying a little bit of everything, um, I feel that self awareness and self self growth and actualization, if you don't have that foundation figured out about yourself, you are never going to be the best you can be for your you know, your boss, your partner, your kid, your spouse. So I think that self-awareness is really important. So you can project that onto your circle of friends, colleagues, family, um, to be the best version of yourself. Wow. You know, it's a high five right there. I, 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 I know you talked before, but I love this just to hear from other people about it, just because like, I know it's also a topic where some people think like, oh, wow, like, you know, this Kate is reading books and she's trying to better herself. Like people kind of look at it in a way, I know some people look at it in a way like they think you're trying to become, I don't say better than them, but it's like, I, th I feel like they realize that like, you both came from one place and it's just honestly, at the end of the day, you have the option to either, I, I see in the background, I don't know, if, uh, in the background, it looks like a bat, <laughs> but I, I want to give the, the description like softball, like everyone has a chance for to, to swing. It's whether you choose to or not at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So did you, I know Ravenscroft is a very, very, very great school. And I have a lot of friends who've come from there. A lot of great friends, actually. Um, what happened next for you to kind of go to college or, or what was the next steps for that for you to really chase that next thing for you? Yes. I always knew I wanted to go to school. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. I still really don't know the answer to that, but right. that's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so after graduation, I went to UNC Wilmington. Um, mm -hmm. I love all things beach related. We're still big beach people in our family. So I went to UNCW, absolutely loved it. Um, worked all through college at a marketing and public relations firm. Um, became a communications major and marketing PR communications. They all blended really well together and that transferred into life after college and then my current role at Henry Schein. Awesome. So how... UNC Wilmington is actually one of the schools I wanted to go to. So you, you got to tell me, like, what were some, what were the highlights? I know there's probably some lowlights, but what were some highlights, lowlights of the, of the beach life, honestly, of the dub? Yeah, I would say that the vibe all uh -huh. the way around was very chill from people, from a people interaction standpoint. Everyone mm -hmm. is very accepting very laid back and um we didn't have a football team which i thought yeah. i would really miss i feel like that's one of the you know quintessential college experiences but that instead forced us to all hang out with each other and they were just a good group of people from diverse backgrounds and everyone got along it's safe and it's a beach you're just chill all, exactly. all the time and um i like that so it was just a really happy positive experience all around I've seen these shirts. I can't remember when the college was created, but it's like uh, I think it's NCAA football champs since like nine or since et cetera, like whenever the college was created, and it's hilarious because it's they've never had anything. Yeah, that's exactly. awesome. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so dentistry. I know it's like a we. I still get asked all the time, like, dude, why do you work with dentists? Like that is such the like the weirdest niche, but why you know what i mean like why did that what did that need to really do for you to kind of get you in there so i stumbled into dentistry serendipitously so my background is in public relations and marketing and at the time i loved that job but there is a tremendous amount of work travel involved zero balance and i was never home and i was just really tired and burned out so I came home from an event that I was working, drove to my mom's house, and was just kind of explaining to her that I was just tired. Right. And she said, well, you know, there's a guy that lives next door that sells something. Why don't you go talk to him? Have you ever considered a career in sales? And I was like, no, the idea of selling anything to anyone is... It, it is. It is. Ironically enough, that's become my career. Uh, and I still don't like selling things, and we can talk um, about that later. Yeah. But um, so anyway, so I walked over to this guy's house, rang his doorbell like a Girl Scout, 
and I said, hey, my name is my name is Kate. I understand that you sell something. What do you sell? And do you think I can sell it too? And he's like, <laughs> well, come on in. And um, he was a rep with, or and still is a rep with Henry Shine. He goes, oh, I sell sales supplies. And I kind of thought to myself, oh, you know, I'm a career oriented person. I don't think that's a real thing and uh -huh. dental supplies, I don't know. And he's like, well, let, let me educate you more on, on what it's really about. And he was kind of sharing his story and he was talking about his customers and what he did. And it sounded really, really appealing to me, something totally different. Um, so I interviewed and got the job about 12 years ago. And Wow. Uh, okay. yeah. How was is, how is the first year? How was the first year of switching from like having, I don't want to say a, a guaranteed, like a dollar or not that's coming in to where sales it's you are I mean I always say you're, you're working for yourself it doesn't matter where you are but like how did how is that transition from from that to that hard <laughs> yeah I still don't have the appropriate word to articulate it right. uh, I was always very grateful for the opportunity um, but you start from scratch meaning they give you a list of 200 doctors um, with the common theme that none of those doctors are buying from your company. Mm -hmm. So they give you a catalog with the best of luck and you cold call, you knock on doors and you have to get the person at the front to give you a chance and the hygienist and the general assistants and the office managers and the doctors, um, all of which are mostly loyal to our competitors. So it, it took about three solid years just wow. to start the genuine relationship building process. So it wasn't even the first year, the second, I mean, it was a solid three years of just hustle and grit, a few tears, but more determination than tears. And then one day it just kind of, it took a turn. And now I see those customers 12 years later, they wouldn't talk to me. And now <laughs> my, my, my family and my friends and my most loyal customers and I just couldn't imagine my life without them in it. So it, it was hard, especially without any dental background. So right. To the point where they'd ask you a question and I'd be like, Google. You know, <laughs> I'll get back to you. Let me check on that. Right. Wow. Yeah. So you, you mentioned a lot of great things and it's, um, but the, pers yeah, per first of all, it with the persistency part, how, I mean, I know it's important because like even for me, when, for example, if I'm reaching out to new people, um, not only emailing, but also sending them a Facebook, what I do is like Facebook videos. So when everybody else is sending messages, why don't I just send a video so they see who I am, whether it's, of course, I can't drop by any businesses right now and I, I don't want to do that, but, you know, sending them letters, et cetera. But persistency, like why is it important? I know we touched it a, a little bit of it when, when we talked about, you know, technology and how everything, which is great, but it's allowed us to want instant gratification. Why is persistency important in anything that you do? Because I think the end result is so genuinely fulfilling. It's, you know, when you work hard, like if you're training for a marathon or something like that, and you train and you train and you train, mm -hmm. that's not easy either. But then you run the race and that feeling of genuine accomplishment mm -hmm. is so worth it. Um, Plus the relationships that you make at, at the end of all that are just, it's just really fulfilling and really, really special, but it's, it's hard and it takes time and a lot of creativity um, and hard work, which I know we've talked about before, but um, right. yeah. Sweet. And, and then you also mentioned the next thing, um, which is relationships, which I feel like they're extremely important. I, I feel like relationships at the end of the day, if someone, I mean, that is honestly stronger than any dollar amount because it opens up an unknown world of opportunities. But what are some ways that you kind of tailored yourself in your own way to be able to build meaningful relationships? Of course, some of them you might want a transaction from, but what, what are the steps that you did that some people watching right now can be able to kind of say, okay, I'm a 40 plus year old person who wants to start building relationships locally, or I'm a middle schooler who I want to start building relationships with people in my community. What are some things that they can be able to do? Um, the great news about that is it's very foundational and the foundations are the most important when you do them consistently and you do them consistently well. The number one bit of advice and the thing that I continue to do is to ask questions. We have mm. ears and one mouth. 
Um, so think about. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so when you ask questions from a genuine place, people want to be heard and people want to talk. So when you ask the right questions, get your pen and paper ready because they want to talk. And then you take notes and then you know exactly what's important to your customer. Um, and then it's up to you to follow up and deliver instead of coming in and trying to sell something and why you're so great or why your company is so great. That might not be important to them. And mm -hmm. it's about the customer. It's not about me. Um, so when you ask the right questions, they will give you a very long list of answers. And then you follow up, customize, and execute. And that's where the value comes in. Um, because if I'm not providing the value that they want, that's not their fault. That's, that's on me. So mm -hmm. I need to figure out what is valuable to them and then do it. <laughs> wow. That is like, we're going to make sure that clip is saved and we're going to run that over and over again. But like you're, and it's a little bit genuine. Like this is why these conversations are amazing because to hear someone kind of with the same thoughts that you have, but 10xing them and just going off like an, another amazing route is just amazing because honestly for me at the end I always like watch these and I'm, I literally just take notes and I'm like okay Kate said this I'm gonna make sure I save that um so in your in your role I know you mentioned your first three year uh, the you know it took three years for stuff to really start getting the traction momentum um what are some highlights of that you've had. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to go a little bit back to the, to the challenges, but I want to do the highlights. What are some highlights that you've had in your career that you've just made some profound relationships or actions that kind of took a turn in a great way? Um, the first thing that comes to mind, so with my approach to selling, um, it's very consultative. So it's not transactional where I'm trying to, you know, sell a product from A to B. It's more of a consultative approach focusing on the business side of dentistry mm. and that a, a can be a challenging mindset for other reps to adapt and implement um, mm. but that's something I naturally gravitate towards um, here so the highlight of my <laughs> career to date no question is that I got connected with the Henry Schein team in Australia Whoa. and they were trying to coach their reps to adapt to more consultative style of selling and they said hey will you come to our national sales meeting in Sydney and what? speak to our Australia and New Zealand teams they were at the same conference and it was life-changing on so many different <laughs> levels I was super honored very nervous um, mm -hmm. incredible people and it was the highlight of my my career at China that, far. that is amazing <laughs> oh my gosh it was so cool yeah, you probably had the moment where you get there, you're like, I'm in Australia, about to speak to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, and it's your peers, you know, and right. I, I enjoy public speaking, and I can speak to and with dentists and their team all day long, but when it's peer-to-peer, -peer, they're like, hey, I know what I know what you do, what are you going to tell me, you know, who is this person, and she's a rep just like me, so when it's peer-to-peer, -peer, I always feel like there's more um, pressure, in a way, to deliver something that they can learn and hopefully grow from exactly but i feel like that's also important especially because they kind of get the um who was the gentleman who broke the four minute mile roger Federer, i think but the person it was like when before he broke the four minute mile it was impossible but then once he broke it it was just okay it can happen so it's like when they see okay kate is doing this she's doing the same exact job but in her own special way then everybody else can either follow they can follow but do it in their own special way similar to you um, so with, of course, with everything going on and, I, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's crazy to think that we've been pretty much for six months. Um, but I want to kind of touch on everything that's been going on. So I want to say for you personally, um, and this is something that I've been asking my friends and kind of people there, for you personally, do you think you've changed throughout this, yeah, North Carolina since March, since for the past six months? And if so, is it positive, negative, and, and how? question um have i changed probably i mean i think it's a good lesson in um you know there's the serenity prayer uh you know uh, help me accept the things i cannot change um Ooh. don't report this part scrap that uh -huh. um <laughs> there, are things, there are things in our life that are within our control and there are things that are out of our control 
Mm -hmm. So with the pandemic, that's out of our control and you can choose to be angry about it. You can be sad, you can be frustrated and you're allowed to have those days because it's been emotional. It's been mental. It's been a little nuts for everyone. You're allowed to have those days, but have your day, recognize that and then move on and instead focus on the things that you can control. At the beginning, that was more time at home with my husband and our animals, and, and that was really nice. And I could focus on the strategic planning aspect of my job. So, I don't know, adaptability. I would say the pandemic really forced myself and others to focus on what we can control, focus on what we cannot control, and then adapt accordingly. I think we're literally the same exact way for that aspect, because for me, it was... It was a time to where March, March-ish, I had, and we know because you have to, when you're talking to uh, the business, you don't talk to directly to the dentist because dentists are doing what? Dentistry in the back. So I remember it was supposed to be March, like let's just say it was this week. That I had already talked to office, office managers, dentists were on board. So the next week I was going to be onboarding like 10 to 15 clients. And I remember I literally was, you know, we do the math and you're just like, wow. And then COVID came. And, and so of course we had to stop, but I'm, I, I tell people at that time, of course, you know, I was a little angry, but I'm actually ha happy that it, that didn't happen because I realized I would have had golden handcuffs. And what that means is that I had the systems tailored to my business and how I can be able to deliver. But I, during this time, since we were all kind of like grounded at home, I focused on investing into getting into groups where, I'm like a small sardine in a, in a gigantic ocean. And I just learned, wow, I actually had no systems at all in my business. So it's like, I'm actually, ha you know, it's, it's, it's a very, it's also a period of, um, you know, realization and just realizing that some things happen, they don't happen to you, they happen for you. Right. Um, so yeah, with, with business side, how did that really, I know you mentioned uh, um, adapting, how did that affect your business and what did you have to kind of do differently um, cause I know there's no, I don't know if you go to conventions or, or kind of anything like that. So what was the, what were the changes? So with, um, with my customers, I feel like we had our own three phases. The first phase was total panic mode. Yeah. And I would get calls, I mean, 24 seven, cause let's face it, all the days kind of blend together with, with all this COVID stuff. And my customers were calling, freaking out a little bit. So I played the role of therapist just listening they weren't calling for advice necessarily they were calling to to have someone listen to their fears um which i was grateful to be in that position for them and to be that shoulder for them to lean on and then phase two once the reality kind of set in they all kicked it into planning mode which was cool but then my calls that i was getting 24 7 were hey kate you know what i want a second location I want to hire an associate. I need wow. to invest in technology to make up for my lost production. So then I'm helping these people plan for their future, which is very rewarding. And then phase three was execution. Um, you know, the doors are open. They're seeing patients. How does that new dental experience look? So while they were leading up to that, Henry Shine as a company was doing an amazing job of giving their sales team the tools um, to have those conversations with doctors. Do you need air purifies? How do you manage aerosol? What is the COVID testing going to look like? What are you supposed to do with your waiting room? How are you supposed to change your scheduling? Mm -hmm. And people are coming to, to us for that. And there is a lot of value. And that is what it's all about, is how are we adding value to our customers day in and day out? Why are they choosing to work with me? Why are they choosing to work with Henry Shine? And pre-COVID, during COVID, post-COVID, we deal with a lot of what we consider non-traditional competitors. So back in the day, it, they were people. There was a Henry Shine rep, myself, and then a competitor rep, and we would compete against each other. But now you have online companies such as Amazon and other <laughs> website only no rep competitors and usually they're a little bit cheaper than shine so how are we adding the value to where we can justify maybe not always being the least expensive option coming full circle when the pandemic hit I mean 
are our customers going to pick up the phone and call their Amazon rep for guidance? No, they're going to call me. So that was a great reminder of, hey, there is a lot of value in this relationship and me understanding your business and genuinely wanting to help because everything I do is for, for my customers from a very genuine place. And they, they see that sometimes they need some reminding, but, exactly. um, but they recognize that and the relationship is super important. Awesome. Thank, thank you so much for sharing that. And that's like, like, again, it's like, you never, you never know how something like, you know, with this and everything that's been happening can actually turn out to benefit you. And I know even for me, there were certain times where I was like, I felt like I was not honestly benefiting, but like I'm doing good, but the whole world seems to be bad. And then you start feeling bad. You're like, should I be doing bad? Like, am I, am I bad for doing good? Um, so with, with kind of transitioning to that, what do you think, um, I, I know you mentioned that the first, your first three years of how hard that was, um, do you, what was like a turning point apart from that, that you had, where you kind of had an adversity that kind of forced you to pivot in a, in a new direction and become the Kate who you are today? Yeah, so um, I actually used the skills I learned from my PR and marketing background to brand myself and to market myself and to network. Um, so I created Dental Kate. I created a website, which it's basic, but I think it's pretty cool. I'm proud of it. And a lot of reps don't have one. And I made myself, you know, koozies and cups and pins that were branded with Dental Kate on there. So they're like, oh, she's more than an average sales rep. Um, and then I also have a newsletter, Tooth Fairy Talk, that I've been doing since the very beginning. I love speaking at study clubs. Um, I co-created a staffing platform on Facebook that has Ooh. over 4,500 members. Whoa. North Carolina, dentists, assistants, office managers, hygienists, and it's just a platform to connect for people that are looking for jobs or for offices that are looking to hire because staffing is always a need that every dental office is going to have until the end of time. So I just differentiated myself um, just to be the, the best. So, you know, if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly type mm -hmm. thing. If I'm going to be a rep, how am I going to do that better than any other rep? Um, mm -hmm. I just worked really hard to do that and continue to do that because I always want to be the, the best I can be. Sweet. And also for people watching, that is exactly how we came across each other of, and it's like, I, I love seeing other people who are doing it and just taking it to another level. Cause I saw her like, you know, kind of looking for reps online. Then I said, I look, I've, I've seen you a lot before. And that's, that's the great thing of the technology that we have. And that's usually the main thing I try to tell, I mean, any, any business or any person, I'm, honestly, it doesn't matter if you're in business, even if you're looking for a job, you should still be branding yourself. I know it's the cliche, like, you know, be careful what you post online, which is true, because at the end of the day, you are your own brand. You are your own walking brand. It's when you walk into a room, people either say, oh, there's Kate, or it's like, oh, my God, there's Kate, right? Um, and so, like, it, it, you know, whatever your industry is, but how I came across you is because looking for locally, and then I found, okay, Kate, she has her own website. Then I went to Facebook. So it was like this spiral just kind of going, but it's like, yep. <laughs> so that's, if you're watching this, she just gave you a million dollar tip, please. But brand yourself, figure out who you are, what you do, and make sure that it is as genuine as possible. Um, let's, uh, this one is going to be a serious question. Okay. Let me, let me know if you're ready for this one. If you had a, an extra $1 million, actually we'll do 1.5 million right now, right? 1.5 million. How would you spend it and why? I would probably approach it the same way I typically manage my finances, mm -hmm. which is broken down three ways, save, share, splurge. Mm -hmm. um, what I mean by saving is I always take care of the non-fun stuff first. It's a personal goal of mine to live a debt-free lifestyle. So no credit card balances, no debt owed, take care of the, it's not fun, but it's the responsible stuff. So put, whether it's 401k contributions, um, I take care of that first. Um, so that would be the safe portion. Mm -hmm. um, the sharing portion, I think it's really, really important to give back to your community, to a charitable mm -hmm. cause that is important to you. It's just part of the circle of life. Um, it makes me feel 
good to help other people and I think everyone should do it um, whether it's in any way whether that's volunteering it doesn't always have to be financial um, but just give back in some some way to something that is important to you and then the third is splurge life is short we all work <laughs> off. We gotta have some fun um, and for splurging for me that would a hundred percent if you ask anyone that knows me they would say oh that would be that would be traveling for for, for me so I live to travel, it uh -huh. brings me a great deal of joy and happiness. So we would book a trip, if not multiple trips. With that kind of <laughs> so where would you go? Like where, like right now, let's just say you got a text message. You're good for work. You can go vacation for a month. You're gonna don't worry about. You're gonna get your money. Um, you have a private jet with your name on it, Dental Kate. You can go anywhere you want. Get the highest, you know, suites, etc. Where are you going? Uh, we would probably go, we had a trip planned to go to Scandinavia this year, but like many other travel plans, that got, uh, that got axed. So I had it all planned out and I want to see it come to life. So we would probably go to Scandinavia and the trip that we were supposed to do. Nice. Sweet. Um, and in, in your space, and honestly, I'm in, in any space, whether you're an athlete, um, entrepreneur, business owner, academic, you have to keep learning. I know a lot of people think that like once you finish school, that's when you stop. But I feel like the day that you stop learning is when it, it will all stop. Um, but what are some things that you do to make sure that you're bettering yourself so you can be able to better others, um, whether it's reading books or just kind of what are some things that you'd like to share with some people um, they can be able to kind of take from? Sure. Kind of like what you mentioned earlier when you joined groups. Um, I like to surround myself with other um successful, goal-driven, smart, outgoing, creative people, whether they're in the dental space or not. Um, I really enjoy learning from best practices because regardless of what industry you're in, theoretically, you can take those foundational components and apply it to any industry, whether that's creating a positive customer experience or customer service or marketing initiative. So I like to be around the energy of mm -hmm other people to learn from them. Um, and of course I like to go to conferences and I read a lot, um, podcasts, dental publications, um, mm -hmm. a little bit of everything. But the thing I enjoy the most is being around other people because I really um, thrive off of their energy. Because sometimes we get, especially in sales, um, we're in our own bubble, bubble sometimes. <laughs> and so it's hard to get access to, oh my God, that's a great, that's a great idea. I'm going to try that. So I, I like being in those environments because we don't always get access to that. Right. What's a, um, what's a book that you, that you would, you could read once or twice every single year or one to three times every year. I really like a book called the pumpkin patch. And oh. that is about basically uh, it starts out with this farmer who has the big pumpkin that wins at the, fair every year for the biggest and greatest pumpkin mm -hmm. but he only gets this prize winning pumpkin by getting rid of all of the lousy pumpkins that have uh, like disease and, disease and they're too small they're not the ideal pumpkin and like you and I talked about earlier focus on the things you love and enjoy and do it and then get rid of the bad pumpkins you know what I'm saying so the more the more emphasis you put on that prize winning pumpkin and get rid of all the other dumpy pumpkins that aren't prize winning. Um, I think the more streamlined in your vision, you will become. So I like the pumpkin patch. It's focus on what you want, focus on your ideal customer and don't focus on anything else than what you're trying, trying to accomplish. Wow. Is it on uh, Amazon? Yes. Oh, that will definitely be the book that I'll, I'll be getting. <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome um so as we as we finish up i want to make sure we're respectful of your time uh the next three things that i wanted to ask you is of course with the podcast what what or who influenced you to influence others the first person that comes to mind is tim sullivan and when i started at henry shine he was the president of henry shine dental and i think true leaders are almost leaders in disguise in a way and what I mean by that is anytime I would speak with him he was so engaged on how are you how can I help what do you need from us as a company what are you struggling with how can I help and he always made you feel like you were the most important person in the room and he would listen he would remember he would follow up super nice guy 
but he's also the president of, or was, was the president of the company, so he was very respectful in getting his messaging across, but he was also very clear of expectations that he had and Henry Schein had as a company for their reps um, and very much would lead by example. And all of those traits combined um, was the reason then and still is a very big reason why today I am so fiercely loyal to Henry Schein is because Tim and a few other members of our leadership team did a really great job of creating a culture and a company environment that I wanted to follow and still want to follow and will continue to follow. So I owe a lot to him and have a ton of respect for him. So. Awesome. And you mentioned culture. Can you just kind of talk about in your own words why I, to me, culture is usually one of the most important things. Like you could have the, 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 the best skills and et cetera, but if your culture fit is not, if your culture just does not fit, it's, it's going to break everything. So why is that important no matter what you're doing? I think it's important that um, our company explains its culture to its team. So we're all, although we're very different with different uh, selling styles, personalities, of course, that's, that's normal, but we all understand the foundational culture as a company. Um, and that is our customers come first. We have a very ethical approach to providing solutions um, to help our customers achieve their goals, which I know that sounds very basic, but um, that's at the core of what we all do. And we, we love what we do and we love our customers. And I think that that shows, and I, I know that they know that. Awesome. Sweet. And uh, what are some words of advice for the people watching this, whether they're younger, whether they're older, younger, um, what are some advice that you can kind of give them, whether it's for work, family, or just from Kate, what are some words of advice that you can kind of give out to them? Yeah. I saw something the other day that just, I loved it and it stuck with me. Um, and it said, there are not a lot of roadblocks when you're going the extra mile. And it like gives me chills. It sounds a little cheesy, but I'm like, that's what it's all about. Uh, so not a lot of roadblocks when you're going the extra mile. And that's what I hope everyone, if, if you want to be the best at what you do, um, go the extra mile, put in the extra work, put in the extra time, get to work early, stay late, make make the life of your customer easier if you can, even though it takes it might take a little more of your time. Um, so yeah, so that would be that would be a bit of advice. And for younger people or older people, any people really work hard and in investing in yourself and the type of life that you want to create and live and then go for it. I firmly believe that within reason, anything is achievable. It's not going to be easy necessarily, but is it doable? Totally. But you need to figure out first what that looks like for you and then, then put a plan together to, to get there. She is dropping knowledge 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 this, the, the invoices will be sent to everyone watching this make sure i'll make sure on that um so lastly what's next for you um where can people you know if it's okay where can people reach out to you find out more about um if they want to ask you any questions or just kind of learn more who you are um so yeah go ahead yeah of course you can find me at dentalkate.com i'm blissfully accessible 24 7 i love to learn from other people Speak with other people. Um, I'll probably be in the dental world in this role, uh, hopefully till the end of time. I love what I do, um, but I want to continue to function as a sales rep on an accelerated level, uh, whether that be speaking engagements, focusing on the staff platform that I talked about called Triangle Dental Solutions, mm -hmm. mentoring other young reps who are going to suffer through those first three years just like I did and help mm -hmm. give them support and mentorship along the way. And then uh, I also have a very strong focus with the dental students that graduate um, and are looking to start their practices for the first time. So really focusing on helping them with that process because it can be a little daunting. Um, awesome. Yeah. Sweet, awesome. So everybody watching, you heard her. Uh, Rewatch this again and again and again. Um, and also I would like to give you advice that people watching is like take action. When I, when I saw, you know, all her information. I remember I told myself, I was like, let me just send her an email. But then like, I literally thought to myself, I'm like, what? And I, I, at this time, I have no idea who she is. I have not talked to her, but I've seen her everywhere online. And I'm like, in my head, what would she do? And I was like, I feel like she would call. 
I was like, uh, okay, might as well. I was like, no, again, the worst thing someone can do is not pick up, <laughs> but I'll just keep following up. Um, but yeah, so I just went ahead and just straight called her. And I remember I was in the car and everything. Um, so yeah, just take action. And you literally never know what can happen. Um, and so I just want to say thank you for coming on and sharing your story and your wisdom to everyone. Thank you. This was wonderful. I appreciate your time. So thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs>